Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out a really awesome asset, the all-in-one sprite shader. This is a very easy way to add tons of polishing to your game to make it just that extra bit awesome. This video is split in two parts. First, let's look at the official demos and see what the asset can do and how they work. And then after that, I will do a step-by-step -step guide on how to start using it and actually add it to your games. Check out the entire asset review playlist where I highlight great assets to help you make your games awesome. This video is sponsored by Unity, which is currently running the massive Black Friday sale on the Unity Asset Store. There's over 500 assets, all heavily discounted, everything from tools to models, animations and tons of effects. On top of that, this sale also has lightning deals, which start at 90% off and slowly go down in discount as more and more people buy the asset. So that means that if you get it quickly, you can get a massive discount. I also made a video and a list covering some of the best highlights. The sale is on until the 4th of December, so check it out with the link in the description. And this asset, the all-in-one sprite shader, is also discounted as part of the sale, so if you like what you see in this video, go ahead and pick it up before the discount ends. And if you're watching this after the sale is over, then you can instead use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. So, the all-in-one sprite shader. Like the name implies, this one is a combination of tons of sprite shader effects all in a single shader, so you can very easily add them to any sprite to give it that extra bit of polish, or you can also combine them to make some truly unique effects. Then of course you can animate all the properties and enable or disable the effects in runtime. All of these effects work on sprites and also on really any renderer. So you can use it with particles, use it with the tile map, the sprite sheet, or for example in the UI. So you can polish your UI with tons of these effects, make it flash, jump around, add some gradient, some glow, and so on. The asset has 150 reviews with a 5 star rating, so if your game is in 2D, then this asset is a no brainer. So here I've got my project and I imported the package. Now the main thing that you see is over here there's a file with the documentation. It's a really detailed PDF file, lots of instructions and details, all very in-depth. And when you install the package, the demo scenes work regardless of your render pipeline. The shader is made to work with any pipeline, so it automatically identifies which one you're using and everything works flawlessly. So if you're using the built-in URP or AGRP, then it works instantly. Now URP does have a 2D specific renderer, which uses 2D lights, so there's also over here a package. This one includes a second demo scene made with those URP lights. So just double click on it and import the whole thing. Then of course make sure you're using URP, so go into edit, project settings, and over here in graphics there's an included URP asset, so make sure you use that one. And then the folder, go inside URP, and then open up the demo original URP. Now one thing, according to the documentation, the settings on this demo are supposedly meant to work with the gamma color space. This is meant to be mobile friendly, so I assume that's why. If you don't know how to set the color space, you go into edit, then down into project settings. Then over here, go into the player, go down into the other settings, and over here you've got the color space. So if you're working on mobile, usually you'd use gamma, because it's more performant. But on desktop, usually you'd go with linear, since it tends to look a bit better. Either way, this asset works with both, you just need different settings with regards to the light intensity. So for example, over here I'm using linear, and the glow effect isn't really glowing. So by default, if you expand the camera inside, you've got the URP volume. So here it's got the post-processing, so it's got bloom. And here the threshold is set really high and the intensity really low. But if you set both of these to 1, then you have now it glows properly. So keep in mind, you can use any color space. Just make sure you set your values accordingly. Okay, so this asset actually comes with two great demos. Let's first see this one. This one is perfect for seeing all of the various effects that you can use. So this one is the base normal sprite. And in this demo, just use the controls to see all the various things. So you've got a glow, a fade, an outline, textured outline, some more. You've got an inner outline, this one looks great. Some gradient, a radial gradient. For some reason, this one isn't working with the demo, but the effect does work. Then some color swap, also really interesting. Hue shift, change just one color, color ramp, and so on. A nice hit effect, a nice negative. You can pixelate, make it grayscale, and so on. So as you can see, tons and tons of base effects. So these are the various color effects. And then if you use the keys to go down, over here you see a bunch of UV effects. So these modify quite a lot of things about the sprites. For example, this hand-drawn effect looks really nice. A nice little wind, some wave, a round wave, some offset. Over here, really nice zoom, some really cool distortion, twisting, and so on. So as you can see, tons and tons of things that you can apply. And the point is that you can combine both of them. So you can combine the color effects up here with the UV effects down here. So if you go down here, you can see the effect combinations, and you can see all of them. So here's a really nice burn, so you got an outline as well as some fade, you got a hologram, and you got a really interesting one, an evil marine, and so on. So as you can see, tons and tons of things. You can mix and match all these effects, and get pretty much anything you can imagine. Oh, 
All right, so this is the first demo. As you can see, tons and tons of possible use cases. All of them are using the exact same shader and all of these effects are usable with any sprite or even any UI element. Then here is the second demo. This one is a real nice scene. Looks pretty natural, like it's part of a real game. And also this demo is meant to demonstrate how the effects work with 2D lights. So that one back there is being illuminated and all the lights as I pass in the light with the camera. So as you can see, everything looks great and it all works pretty perfectly. All right, so now that we've seen what the effect can do, let's see how you can use it in your own game. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Like I said, the asset comes with a great documentation, so definitely check that out. And there's also some super quick video tutorials. It's really easy to set it up, so let's see how to do it. So over here, I've got my game using my own custom sprites. So I can move my camera, I can shoot some bullets, and I can hit those targets. So this demo scene here is pretty much the same one that I used in the shoot projectiles video where I covered multiple methods of handling projectiles. So just a really nice base scene. And over here, I've got a really nice star. This one is meant to be a power up. So as I go, I approach and I touch it and I pick it up. Now, just like this, this power up definitely doesn't look too special. So let's use this really nice asset to add some effects. So over here in my scene, I've got my star and inside the sprite. Okay, that's it, just a sprite render, nothing else. Now the first thing you need is to add a component and add the all-in-one shader component. And when you do, it automatically modifies the sprite material to use the shader. So it adds a component and if you expand upon this material, yep, now you see all of the various effects that you can add. So for example, maybe let's make the sprite glow a little bit. Then maybe also add an outline. You can make the outline use some distortion. So there you go, really nice. Then maybe a nice hand-drawn effect. This one looks really nice. All right, so there it is. Now it looks much more special. And you can see just how easy it was to add all of these effects to make this power up feel completely different, much more powerful. Now, one quick note here. If you have issues with some of these effects, then it's likely because the sprite is too tight. If you go up here and change from shaded into wireframe, you can see the actual mesh shape. Now, some of these effects, like this outline, they need a little bit extra space to render. So if the mesh is way too tight, then they might not look correct. So for that, just make sure you select your sprite and over here on the mesh type, you can change from tight, which will make it have this shape. It tries to cut off all of the alpha as much as possible, but you can set it to full rect. So now the mesh is a quad, which means it has a lot more space for distortion or outlines or any other effects. Same thing if you're working with a sprite atlas, just make sure there's enough space for every effect. Now, the way that this asset saves all of the effects data is in an interesting way. When you add this script, it automatically assigns a material that is dynamically generated. So this way you don't need any extra assets on your project folder. The data is instead saved along with the scene file. So that's great, no more files, no more clutter. But that also means that if the object isn't in a scene, then this method does not work. For example, if I take off the star and I make it into a prefab, and I open the prefab, and nope, there's no effects. So all of the effects are now gone. So all of that data is completely lost. So for anything that exists outside of a scene, like a prefab, you need to make a proper material for it. Now, thankfully, there's an easy way to do just that. So over here on the all-in-one shader component, you've got this button, save material to folder. Now, if you want to know what folder this is going to save to, you can go up here into window and then the all-in shader window. And over here, you see all of the defaults and various other things. So for example, the material save path is over here on the materials folder. And if you click on it, you see it's inside all-in-one and you've got the materials. So if you take on this and you just click on that, and there you go, it creates this one. Let's just rename this to the star. So now this one is using that material. And now I can safely turn this into a prefab. And if I go inside the prefab, yep, it does work. Also one quick note here, it's not glowing. That's simply because in the prefab scene over here, we don't have any post-processing. But if we are over here in our scene and we just paste it, there you go, everything works perfectly. So now I can spawn as many power-ups as I want and they all have the same material with the same effects. Now, as I mentioned a while ago, you can easily animate all of these effects, so all of these properties are animatable. So let's see how to do that. Over here on the target, I already have a nice animation for when the target is damaged. So as I am and I shoot it, you can see that nice little animation. So let's add some more effects and animate it. So once again, we add the component first of all. Then down here, let's choose a bunch of things. One of the effects is a hit effect. So this one is perfect for hitting and then slowly bringing it down. So just open up the animation window. And over here, this one already has this animation, so it just moves the sprite to the side. And over here, just need to hit on record. And first of all, when it hits, let's put this one on one, then go back there and bring it back down to zero. And yep, now if we play, yep, now we do see the effect. All right, so here I am, and as I shoot it, yep, there you go. Now I've got some real nice effects, and all of them nicely animated. All right, awesome. 
So that's one way to modify the effects through an animation. Another way is directly through code. Another quick note, over here is my player character, and I'm not actually using the sprite render. My character uses a custom animation system, which is a mesh render. So if I just add the script as usual, so I add the all-in-one script. If I do that, it doesn't actually change the material. So this one, as you can see, it's still using the sprite length default. But in order to change it, first over here on the shader variant, change it to default. And when you do, it automatically modifies the shader. So now my material still exists in my project files, and now it's using that shader, and I can apply all the effects that I want. So over here on this material, I added just the glow effect. Now this is meant to be the special shader material. So as the player picks up the power-up, it should enable these effects. And when the power-up expires, they should get disabled. So that's the goal. Let's see how we can modify these through code. It's actually quite simple. It's the same way as any other shader property. So here is my player script. Just got some basic power-up logic. So just the timer counts down, then you got the power-up stopped and listens to a trigger enter when it hits with a star. Then we've got the player picked up the star. So it starts the power-up and then stops. So over here, let's modify those effects. First thing we need is the actual material reference. So I'm adding here as a serialized field. And now in the editor, just drag the reference, okay? And now here, I just want to go into the material and I want to modify the glow. So like I said, as with any other shader, you call material.setFloat, if you're modifying a float. Then this one takes a name for the actual material property. So for all of the property names, they're written directly in the shader. So if you select the shader and over here, click on edit, it opens up the actual shader file. And over here, you can see all of the properties. So for example, for the glow, you've got the underscore glow. Or alternatively, they're also over here on documentation, if you scroll all the way down. Yep, here you've got all of the properties. So for example, for glow, you've got the underscore glow. So this is the one that I want to modify. So modify the underscore glow. And when the power up starts, let's put it maybe on 30. And when the power up ends, let's put it back to zero. Okay, so let's see. So here I am, my player does not have any glow, and as soon as I go in, yep, there you go, I get a glow, and after three seconds, yep, there you go, no more glow. All right, awesome. And now, of course, you can apply some simple smoothing in order to make it less instant, so right now it instantly goes and instantly goes away. Let's apply some smoothing. So for that, instead of setting it just once, let's do up here on our update. All right, so just the same thing, just using methf.lerp in order to smoothly interpolate it. All right, so here, and as I pick it up, yep, there you go, now it's nice and smooth, and for going away, yep, nice and smooth. So you see how by combining those with a proper tweening library, you can see how easy it is to control. So here I applied a whole bunch more effects, and if I pick it up, yep, there you go, nice and smooth, look at that, looking really nice, and yep, then it goes away. As you can see, tons of effects, really nice, really nicely smooth. All right, awesome. And like I mentioned, this works on any renderer. So here the bullet has a trail render and it's using a material and I'm using this and apply a bunch of effects. And yep, there's the bullet with a real nice glow. So I can pick it up, go into my super and then the super ends and then I pick it up again and everything looks really nicely awesome. So nicely animated and then yep, really good. So if you compare the before and after, you can see quite a drastic change and all it took was just a few minutes to set it up. So you can see how by combining all these individual effects, by animating them either through animations or through code, by doing all of that, you can really make an infinite amount of variation. All right, so that's the all-in-one sprite shader. If you've got a 2D game, then I would highly recommend you look into this asset. Adding all kinds of effects to your game will give it that extra bit of polish to make it truly stand out. It is super easy to use and all of the effects work great. So the fact that it has 150 five-star reviews definitely checks out. And don't forget to check out Unity's Black Friday sale. If you like this asset, then this is the best time to get it. And beyond that, check out all the other assets on sale. Pretty much all of the best ones are currently discount. I hope you find this asset useful in your own projects. Check out the full asset review playlist for some more awesome assets. Let me know in the comments any suggestions for what other assets I should review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.